So a few quick kind of points on, on these. We've talked a lot about bacteria and fungi, but today uh, I'm trying to try and uh, encourage more fungi in our soils as a general rule. It does depend, but as a general rule. Um, so well, what are the kind of food sources that fungi like? Well, they like <coughs> they like complex carbohydrates. So more larger, um, longer chain carbon chains, not small little simple molecules. They like something a bit more woody, more fibrous with a wider carbon to nitrogen ratio. So things like uh, seaweeds, well seaweeds are good multi-purpose kind of materials, but uh, fish hydrolysates, um, rich in fish oils, are good fungal foods. So just to clarify that, a fish hydrolysate is different from a fish emulsion in that a fish emulsion is basically heated, so it's a more vigorous, aggressive process that heats uh, the fish waste materials, um, and that heating process does denature some of the fish oils and the proteins and make, breaks them down quicker and makes them smaller, which makes them more of a bacterial food source compared to a fish hydrolysate, which is more enzymatically digested. It's a colder process, and you have more longer chain kind of aminos and proteins and, and compounds in there. So it's more of a fungal food source. And humic acid, as we've uh, talked about as well. Compared to bacteria, they like simple things. Okay, so sugars, molasses, fulvic acid, they like young fresh green material, um, leafy green material, high nitrogen is what bacteria love. Fungi like the more mature, more woody, more fibrous materials. Now we talked a little about protozoa. How many bacteria does a protozoa eat in a day, roughly? 10,000. 10,000, 10, that's right, someone was listening. Um, so if we're trying to encourage protozoa in our soils, well they feed on bacteria, so obviously we need to encourage bacteria in order for the protozoa to have a little food source for them. Similarly for the nematodes, well depending on what the nematode feeds on is depending on what we may need to encourage. So, <coughs> generally speaking, in terms of working with biological systems, generally speaking, in terms of what we can manage as farmers is really the bacteria and the fungi are our kind of starting points of what we can try and manipulate and work with. And as we bring those organisms up and active in the soils, usually the protozoa and the nematodes will follow on. Um, they, they kind of usually take care of themselves a bit easier. So green manures, nice and simple. Biological farming doesn't have to be complicated and it's not complicated. Feed soil life, a very simple rule. Just put some food into the soil. Give the organism some carbon. Yes, soils are vast and complica um, complex and diverse and dynamic and constant state of flux and active. Yes, it's a mind-numbingly complex world, but can doesn't necessarily have to be so complex to manage these organisms. Give them some food. Give them some oxygen. Give them some water. Very simple, it doesn't have to be uber complicated. So, what can we feed soil life? Green manures, great way. Uh, add organic matter, ryegrass of course, good for bulk or a lot of our grasses, those fine uh, fibrous root systems, uh, great bulky organic material there. Oats, ideal for uh, quick establishment in narrow windows um, within the kind of crop cycle. Uh, legumes, of course, are helping out with nitrogen fixation, and legumes are, generally speaking, highly mycorrhizal plants, so legumes are a great um, a rotational crop to encourage the build-up of mycorrhiza in the soil. And, of course, our brassicas contain those uh, range of fascinating compounds um, that uh, have a biofumigant-type properties in terms of managing uh, disease organisms or uh, root-feeding nematodes, etc. So, you know, and well, okay, there's a range of different things we can use, but why not also a diversity? Who says we have to only plant oats or only do a legume? What about some mixed species green manures? They're all releasing different root exudates, stimulating different microorganism groups. Let's get some diversity into our pastures, into our green manures. Um, different plants, they all do different things, accumulate different nutrients, etc. Um, but most importantly, what green manures do is uh, contribute root exudates to the soil. It's a very simple thing to keep soil life functioning and thriving is just have living plants grow in the soil. Those plants are exuding those root exudates, that's keeping the biology firing along. Just keep the soil covered, nice and simple. Of course, particularly our mycorrhiza. So as we mentioned, bacteria like young, fresh green manures. So if we're growing a green manure at the point in which we return that, if it's still young and tender and green and leafy, well, that's a bit more of a bacterial food source. But if we let it grow a little bit more mature, a little bit more fibrous, um, then that becomes a little bit more of a fungal food source there. 
Um, cover crops, of course, constant soil cover keeps that constant flow of root exudates into the soil. We see long-term soil stabilization, a lack of disturbance there, improved soil aggregation. When we improve soil aggregation, that makes the environment favorable for the fungi to grow. It, it protects our carbon and keeps our organic matter in the soil. Okay, biofertilizers, we have things like composts, liquid compost extracts, and commercial inoculums. The biggest thing to remember about compost is that is, it is alive. It is a living product. It is a living fertilizer. Compost is not just about organic matter and nutrients, although they're very important properties of what organic matter is, but it is covered in microbial uh, biomass, and it's the microbes in the compost that help to uh, release the nutrients that are in there that um, uh, contribute to that building of soil fertility. So when we apply compost to the soil, we are introducing those organisms that grow in the compost into the soil. We are repopulating the soil uh, with that compost. But that's qual good quality compost, of course. 